successful year in North American Soccer League history. The league's record attendance of nearly 1,200,000 spectators for 151 games marked a 24% increase over last year. On an individual team basis, the expansion San Jose Earthquakes and Seattle Sounders both shattered the attendance mark set by Kansas City back in 1968. And Miami, where today's championship game is being played, drew more than 73,000 spectators for the season, an increase of 34% over last year. All of this reflected a league so competitive that 10 of the 15 North American Soccer League teams were in serious contention for six playoff berths with only three weeks remaining in the season. But Los Angeles and Miami wound up on top. And to tell you more about today's championship game, let's go to Frank Lieber at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Thank you very much, Jack, and welcome to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Working with us today, the general manager of the New York Cosmos of the NASL and a renowned soccer authority, Clive Toy. Clive? Thanks very much, Frank. And let's get straight to the heart of this Los Angeles team, straight to midfield, where they win so much because they control so much, and they control so much because of Louis Marotti, one of the league's outstanding midfield players. Up front, they have Doug McMillan, rookie of the year, third highest scorer in the league, always dangerous around goal. But even a team as offensive-minded as L.A. must think of defense, too. And back there, lonely, cool, and very brave is Blas Sanchez. But even those three players do not make L.A. the pre-game favorites. That title belongs to Miami. The talk about Miami is Carl Root Jr., himself Rookie of the Year a year ago, Dallas Tornado's outstanding center forward. Kyle? Thank you, Clive. And having lost to Miami last week 3-1 to one in the semifinal, I certainly have a lot of respect for all their players. But specifically number seven, the speedster from Trinidad, Steve David, who along with the always unpredictable number 11, Warren Archibald, makes that Miami front line awfully, awfully tough to beat. And in midfield, too, Miami is strong, with number 10, the captain of the Toros, Ronnie Sharp, who by controlling midfield and with his devastating runs up front into the attacking zone, I think is the man to watch for the L.A. defense. And so all of the action of this year's Banner North American Soccer League season comes down to today's championship game between Los Angeles and Miami. And Frank Lieber will be back with a kickoff in just a moment. Ready for the opening kickoff for the North American Soccer League Championship game, and there it is. It's Miami in the dark jerseys against the Los Angeles Aztecs in the white. Battle for possession of the ball. Marathi, number 10, controlling it for Los Angeles, sending it upfield to Murray Bonhoeffer. Has it uh, taken away momentarily, and then controlled by Tony Douglas. First moment of this ball game. These teams, uh, Clive, offer rather contrasting styles of play, don't they? They do, Frank. There's the discipline and uh, tight control of Los Angeles and the, uh, the vigor and uh, enormous strength of Miami. And I think Miami are going to need some of that strength today to try and keep the ball away from Osvaldo Torriani, the goalkeeper, as much as possible. We had a pregame sensation when Torriani, who played every minute of every game this season for Miami, uh, was found to be suffering from a bad uh, muscle pull. He did it in practice yesterday. There was Torriani. And uh, for a long while, we thought that Torriani would not be able to start for Miami. Okay, here come the Miami Toros, upfield. The ball hit the official accidentally. And John Davis still shaking his head there from the effects of that blow. Bonhoeffer, number nine, for Los Angeles, trying to penetrate, has it taken away by Alan Hamlin, number 15. The Purple Heart veteran from Vietnam, uh, American citizen. There's so many of these teams in the North American Soccer League now have uh, Quite a few Americans. By the way, we have a surprisingly large turnout here at the Orange Bowl in Miami for this 1974 North American Soccer League game. Of course, many in their shirt sleeves today because the temperature uh, well up in the 80s, the humidity rather high as well. Los Angeles throwing on the near side. Turned around by Miami and kicked out of bounds. You can see the out-of-bounds line right there. It's not the football out-of-bounds line, which is the wide white stripe. The actual out-of-bounds line for soccer is uh, outside of that. One of the Miami players struck there. A foul is called and a free kick coming up. It was Steve Arangis, in fact, uh, Frank, who was uh, hurt there. Kick is being set up by Kel uh, Ken Malander, number six. Frank, I think here we need to look for Ralph Wright off the far post, number five coming in. Moraldo turns that one around for Los Angeles. High kick by Cortez. A team like uh, Miami almost have to leave three or four men.
back because of that fast break potential of Archibald and David. Toriani gets it out of there. We might explain what happened to Toriani yesterday, which uh, put his status doubtful, Kyle. Uh, that's certainly right, Frank. Yesterday in practice, he was out here just trying to get used to the, the mid-afternoon heat and uh, had a shot to his left calf, and he's still limping on it, uh, as we'll see as the game progresses. There's the two goalies, Toriani on the left, who is an Argentinian, and Blas Sanchez on the right, who is obtained uh, out of Mexico by the Los Angeles Aztecs three games deep into the regular season. Here's a Los Angeles throw it on the far side. Here's Douglas penetrating deep, trying to get the cross, fires it into the side of the net. Frank, so a goal kick upcoming. The ball is out of play momentarily. The score, Miami nothing, Los Angeles nothing. in midfield. Over to Marotti, loses footage for a moment, has it taken away by Arangas, but Los Angeles gets it right back. Bonhoeffer with the header. Trying to set up McMillan. McMillan will be a marked man today for Los Angeles. There is a, well, the official says play on. Steve David trying to get around with the cross, and Sanchez comes out of goal. Oh, well, we had a handball there momentarily. I uh, certainly did. The referee let that play continue because of the advantage that the Miami team had there. Uh, of course, number seven, Steve David, the man we talked about in pregame, uh, just loves to get one-on-one -on -one with defenders as he was there, and uh, he's awfully dangerous. Ronnie Sharp from Miami will take the corner kick. Ball touched last over the goal line by the goalie. It means that Miami gets the corner kick here. He tries to fire it right into the goal mouth. There is a semi-header. Right went high in the airport. Couldn't quite get control of it. The ball out of play at the score. Miami nothing, Los Angeles nothing. Throw it on the far side for Miami as one of the Los Angeles players. Looked like uh, he may have come up with an ankle there. Uh, Arienzo may have turned an ankle. Shot wide by Rafael Arguelles. There's the opposing coach, John Young, on the left of your screen, the coach of the year in the National uh, North American Soccer League, and Alex Paroli, the Los Angeles coach. Once upon a time, it was Young who played for Paroli, didn't he, uh, Clive? Yes, uh, back in Toronto, about 10, 15 years ago, John Young was uh, one of Alex's players. And I must say, I'm sure I had a both of them, in fact, worked for me at New York. John Young was our assistant coach, and Alex was our, our chief scout, and they've both done a fantastic job with their clubs this season. Corner kick on the far side, taken by Ronnie Sharp of Miami. He fires it into the goal mouth and headed out of there very nicely by Uri Bonhoeffer. One of the Miami players, Arguez, goes down, but Miami manages to control. Offside will be the call. Well, I guess we ought to try to explain offside. Clive, you want to try it, or Kyle, you want to try it? I think we'll let Clive try it, Frank, and if he can do that in the next 10 seconds, I'll give him a stake after the, the broadcast. Wow. Well, well, it's the only difficult rule in soccer, and uh, offside is if uh, you are further uh, advanced than two defensive players, opposing defensive players, at the moment the ball is passed to you by one of your team, you're offside. In that 35-yard zone, if you can see the... Uh, 35-yard zone, that's offside. Ball is out of play with the score. Miami nothing, Los Angeles nothing. Action at midfield. We get a whistle. The ball is out of bounds down the far sideline. John Davies, by the way, is the referee. The linesmen are Bob Sumter and Paul Avis. Just behind that free kick there, number two for Los Angeles. That's not good for L.A. because he's the man who's going to be looking after uh, Warren Archibald, one of Miami's two uh, fast men up front. Here's Cortez firing the ball into the penalty area. Headed out of there very nicely. By Miami. Good ball control there by Arangas. Turned around quickly by Los Angeles. Ralph Wright, near side to Watts. Number nine, Bonhoeffer controls for Los Angeles. Going one-on-one -on -one over there with Ronald Sharp, the all-league midfield player for the Miami Toros. Miami in the dark jerseys, Los Angeles in the white. Tony Douglas, one of several players from Trinidad playing on uh, both of these squads today. In fact, Miami has 
three starters who come from Trinidad, including their dynamic duo, Steve David and Warren Archibald. Archibald was the most valuable player in the North American Soccer League last year. David was well up in the balloting for Rookie of the Year this year. He's done an outstanding job. Here's Miami trying to set something up. Derek Watts, number nine, with the cross right at the goalie, Blas Sanchez. No score here. About 10 minutes deep. Soccer, of course, play 45-minute halves, and it's virtually non-stop action. Foul call. As a referee, John Davis setting up the situation. Free kick here for Los Angeles. There's Doug McMillan, rookie of the year in the North American Soccer League, and he takes a pretty good pop from Alan Hamlet. Marathi back out to midfield to Cortez, a former World Cup player from Uruguay. Tony Douglas, World Cup player from Trinidad. Number 11, Cortez. Number 11 is Warren Archibald, and he can fly. A fellow who was uh, beaten out for the scoring title last year by uh, none other than Kyle Rowe Jr. in the very last day of the season. Another flagrant violation there. Who, me? <laughs> Mario Zanotti, number five. Zanotti coming in from behind and uh, really fouling. Here it is coming up. Zanotti getting his foot right there for Watts, pulling him down from behind and doing it so badly that referee John Davis had to warn him there, don't do it again. Popped into the penalty area and turned around by De Rienzo. Comes up field to Bonhoeffer. Has it get by him. Zelrich Figaro jumps it back to the goalie. Osvaldo Torriani. Miami in control. Frank, you just mentioned Torriani. It's going to be interesting to see how long it takes the Los Angeles team to realize that uh, that goalkeeper is hurt. At least he's not in uh, the capacity that he has been the last couple of games. Ball going out of bounds across the way. How would you take advantage of uh, Torriani right now, knowing the problem he has? Well, I try and cross the balls. I think Miami, if they are weak at all, uh, it's in the air. And, so LA does not like the cross ball. If they can see that the Toriani is hurt, uh, I think Paroli's smart enough to try that. Miami, by the way, has won 10 straight games at home. They are a tough team at home. And especially tough on the artificial turf, which Los Angeles is not really used to playing on. The fancy footwork there as Miami controls. Ken Malander over on the far side, the right. The Derek Watts, and Watts is shoved again by Zanotti, number five. It was Watts who scored two goals last week against the Dallas Tornado. He's a young man who scored only three goals all year coming into that playoff game. Watts is uh, playing a similar role to the one that Kyle would, of course, be playing for Dallas. He's the target man, and uh, as such, he's going to suffer a lot of physical contact up the middle there. Free kick set up for Miami here. It looks like uh, Sharp is going to take it, but... Uh, they set up plays on these things, and sometimes you never know who really is going to take it because they come in at all kinds of angles. You see uh, Los Angeles setting up the wall there. They have five men in the wall to try to block it. Sharp tried to slip it by him and uh, get it over to Ralph Wright. Couldn't get it through. So Miami starts from midfield again, trying to set it up. Figaro, number 14. A little battle there with Bonhoeffer. Trying to maintain possession. Watts. To Hamlet, and Hamlet is tripped by Zanotti, who comes up with his third foul in a row. Well, he's going to get a yellow caution card Here, now. Here's Zanotti coming in, and Hamlet went past him, clearly past him. Zanotti brought him down a bad foul, and out came the yellow card. That signals that John Davis is going to report in the league office, cautioned him. If he does that kind of thing again, he could be ejected, and that would mean L.A. playing with ten men for the rest of the game. Here's Miami. David trying to get in position for the shot. He booms a good save by Sanchez. Los Angeles comes out of it. De Rienzo. Coming up field. Acosta. Bonhoeffer sends it back to Marotti. Marotti across midfield. Far side. Acosta. Douglas back to Costa. Costa winds up and fires right at the goalie. Oh, 
hooks a pass way outside. Ron no score in the game. Almost 15 minutes deep. A couple of great saves there, though. First by uh, Sanchez. Really difficult. And Torriani's first test of the game, he seemed to be fine, even though we know that he's suffering badly from a muscle pull. Pass down to Derek Watts, number nine. Watts winds up right at the goalie, Sanchez. He had Archibald wheeling down the middle there, but couldn't get the cross to him. And the shot was straight at Sanchez, the goalie. Morotti across the center line for Los Angeles. Midfield to Bonhoeffer. Hamlin coming across to take it away from Miami. Good play by Hamlin. Understand Hamlin is going to be a member of the U.S. national team, which you're going to be on foul. Right, Frank. Here comes Miami. David out to Sanchez to scoop it up. Good play by Sanchez. Frank, the reason that Miami was so dangerous there was because their right back, Alan Hamlin, was able to move. But now we see the, the problem of moving the right back up. We had Douglas McMillan wide open on the left wing. That ball is moving up and down the field in a very warm afternoon. It's got to be hot down there. What kind of footwork would they wear in this game right now? Frank, a lot of the players will wear flat shoes, uh, but with it being slightly wet because of the rains yesterday, I imagine they'll be wearing what we call a cleated shoe, a uh, multi-studded shoe. Here come the Miami Toros on the attack on the left wing. Arienzo takes it away from Roddy. Pass intercepted there by Ken Malander. Dumps it back to Hamlet, and he starts it upfield. Alan Hamlet. Malander. Almost at midfield. Bumps it deep. Los Angeles missed the header there. Archibald trying to get in position for the shot. Tried to put it over to Steve Davis. He couldn't quite get it there. Still no score. Los Angeles and White. Miami and Dark. Arangues, number four for Miami. Durrani Sharp, probably uh, the outstanding midfield player in the North American Soccer League. He is a good one. Saved from going out of bounds on the near side, and Sharp trying to keep it from going out at the corner. Does a good job. Guarded very closely, gets it into Watts. Watts tries to cross it, corner. and it is, will be a corner kick. Last touch by Pedro Martinez, number six. And Miami will get a corner kick on the near side as Miami continues to apply the pressure. Ron Sharp takes the corners. Right in the middle there, not only are the Miami forwards up, but Ralph Wright, number five, the center back, has left his defensive position, and he's signaling for the ball, trying to get to it. He's got to it. Wright scores! Beautiful header by Ralph Wright. Oh, you saw that one coming, Clive. Here it comes again, Ronnie Sharp. Ralph Wright comes straight towards not Mark. It's a goal. What a goal to start off for Miami. Nobody came with Ralph Wright. That's Watch like it from behind the goal. Watch no one going with Ralph Wright. Sanchez can't get there. Can't get there. Clive, that happened against your New York team earlier this year, didn't it, with Ralph Wright moving up? And, uh, Ralph Wright did exactly the same against New York, and in this vital moment, the first goal in a game like this is so important, and Ralph Wright must be so happy with himself right now. Shot fielded plainly by Torriani. Ralph Wright scored four goals during the course of the regular season, most of them just like that. Just a beautiful header. Miami has jumped out in front. 18 minutes deep into the game. There he is, Ralph Wright. Six feet tall, 170 pounds. Wright formerly with the New York Cosmos. Played with Southport in the English League. Foul called here, Los Angeles. Trying to get into the area. There's McMillan. Shot is high. Goal kick, ball out of play, and the score. Miami won. Los Angeles, nothing.
Soriani fisting a shot away, and it will result in Los Angeles' first corner kick of the afternoon. It'll be taken on the far side by Tony Douglas. Corner kick by Douglas, headed out of there by right. Shot by Marotti is high and away. Soccer, of course, is continuous action. They just never stop. 45 minutes a half. Great, great test of stamina. It certainly will be today, Frank, because the temperature up here in the booth must be uh, getting on to 90. And down there on that artificial turf, I cannot guess what the temperature must be. And they really have to go. Here comes Douglas. Shot on goal, wide of the mark. Goal kick upcoming. Ball is out of play with the score. Miami won, Los Angeles nothing. Coriani. Los Angeles controls. Going for the equalizer here. We get a whistle and a foul, I believe, called against Doug McMillan, who shoved number 11, Warren Archibald. Coming up on CBS tonight, your first look of the season at O.J. Simpson, the 2,000-yard rusher of the Buffalo Bills, as the Bills take on the Minnesota Vikings. 9.30 Eastern time. The ball is out of play, and the score is Miami 1, Los Angeles nothing. Mary? Yeah. How much time was Mary? Where's our roll aids? Active indigestion. And how? Try these, they're good. Good, maybe, but they're not Rolaids. In this medical report, Rolaids active ingredient was medically recognized safe and effective, taken as directed. Rolaids with no extra ingredients not intended for your stomach yeah, consumes 47 good. times its weight in <laughs> excess stomach acid. Rolaids ingredient, medically recognized, safe and effective. Back to play we go. Figaro was shaken up momentarily for Miami, but uh, back on his feet and ready to go as we head back to action. Players around the midfield area. Los Angeles player, number 11, Kenny Douglas goes down. Foul is called by Kenny Douglas. A yellow, yellow card. Big issue. Here's Miami controlling down the left wing. Sharp trying to get something going as the ball shoved out of bounds across the touchline on the far side. It'll be a Miami Troy. Miami leading by a score of one to nothing. About 23 minutes deep, long kick. Trying to reach Steve David. Number seven. Steve David just missed it, too. Uh, touch of it, the outside of his right foot, and he'd have had that one under control, I think. Sanchez with the goal kick goes to DiRienzo on the far side. There's the coaches looking on. John Young on the left of your screen from Miami and Alex Crowley. Of the Los Angeles Aztecs, who's done an amazing job with an expansion team. Second year in a row that we've had an expansion club in the NASL Finals. Philadelphia, of course, uh, was in there last year and beat... Uh, what was that team that beat, Kyle? <laughs> Unfortunately, I remember all too well, Frank. Uh, no, and I think our crowd today might approach that, that record crowd that we had last year in Dallas. 18, that uh, crowd in Dallas for the championship game last year was 18,000 plus. We've got a, just an outstanding crowd. Here's a whistle and a foul call. Bonhoeffer, number nine, Los Angeles going down with Ralph Wright. There's the crowd, a portion of the crowd, I should say, and it is loud, it is uh, vocal, enthusiastic. The reason Bonhoeffer there was so upset, Frank, is because he thought the referee should have had an advantage call there and let the ball go on. Certainly, Ronaldo Costa had a good chance at a, at a shot as he moved down the field. Here's Marotti trying to get it to Cortez. Can't quite make it. Picked up by Derek Watts, number nine. He sends it downfield. Look at this man fly. Warren Archibald. Beautiful move by Archibald. Loses his foot. He tries to get it across to David. David in there. But Sharp is, and Sharp can't quite get up to it as it goes across the goal line. Go kick. The ball is out of play, and the score, Miami 1, Los Angeles, nothing. Back to play here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Championship game, 1974 North American Soccer League season. The Miami Toros in the dark jerseys, the Los Angeles Aztecs in the white. Miami leading by a score of 1 to nothing. 
Here's Marotti sending it downfield for Los Angeles. Turned around quickly by Miami. Hamlet pointing downfield as he tries to set something up here for the Miami Toros. Miami Toros comes back to Malander at midfield. Far side and a header over there missed by Arquez. Throw in for the Los Angeles Aztecs. Arienzo takes the throw in. Comes to Cortez. This is the kind of time frame when a player like Cortez is so valuable. He's played in three World Cup finals for uh, Uruguay. And uh, when you're a goal down in this kind of game, you need the experience. There's uh -oh. a whistle, and penalty. I believe a penalty. foul inside the penalty area. So we may have a penalty kick as Bodhoffer tried to get the ball to Costa, and Costa went down inside the penalty area. Kyle? Here we have the ball chipped up to Costa, and the block there by uh, Arguelles, I believe. Yes, it is. And uh, a very good act, though. I don't think he's quite nearly as hurt uh, as it looks right now on the field. Well, they're calling for the trainer to come out. Well, it certainly was, it seemed, a simple situation for the Miami defense. And it was half a collision and, and half a foul, and I... John Davis, certainly the referee, was no more than 15 yards away, and he made the decision immediately. Of course, under the rules of soccer now, we come down to that one-on-one -on -one situation, the penalty kick matching a kicker against a goalie, and that's kind of like an extra point in professional football. So Los Angeles, excellent he, opportunity to tie things up. Here's, here's the end zone shot you can see there as, as Arguilas was half-turning. It, it was a close judgment call, that one, because they were both going for the ball. Ricardo De Rienzo, number two, has been elected to take the penalty kick. You can pick anybody you want on your team. It doesn't have to be the man foul. Moriarty dies at the goal. So the game is tied as one. As Moriarty diving to his right, he guessed right. That's about all you can do, isn't it, Kyle, as far as the goalie goes, is guess? It really is, Frank. You know, we've seen Toriani many times this year, and it's obvious that he really can't put all the weight on his left leg that he'd like to. Here we have it on the, on the replay and uh, the kick just to his right, and he's having to push off of his right foot, which he would normally not want to do. He'd normally want to go off of his left leg, but he can't because of the injury. All right, play back in at midfield with the kickoff taken by Miami. So the game is tied at one as Los Angeles ties it up here with about 19 minutes left to play in the first half. Attempted cross by David is rather wild over everything. It'll be a goal kick for Los Angeles. The ball is out of play, and the score is now Miami 1, Los Angeles 1. Kicked out of bounds at midfield. Be a Miami throw, and there's De Rienzo who just tied things up on that penalty kick. We've had the irony of soccer here, Frank. Uh, the Miami goal was by Ralph Wright, a defensive player, sneaking up when no one watched him in scoring. And then, of course, LA's tying goal also from Durienzo, who we expected to spend most of the afternoon looking after Warren Archibald. Durienzo who scores the LA equalizing goal. So two defensive goals so far. Von Hoffer and the White giving Watts all kinds of trouble for Miami. Sharp trying to get it into the middle to Archibald, taken away by Cortez, number 12. Up it comes to Tony Douglas. Sends a pass to Doug McMillan, the rookie of the year in the North American Soccer League, trying to get around Figaro and Cat. Figaro trying to save it from going over the end line. It does, and that will result in an Aztec corner kick. That's really a bad play there, Frank, by Figaro. Uh, if, if he had used his left foot, he could have given Los Angeles just a throw in rather than a corner kick, which is awfully dangerous. Douglas will take the corner kick. Fine World Cup player from Trinidad. Trinidad, you know, came within just a whisker of getting to the World Cup. They were beaten out by Haiti in the eliminations. Better by Costa is missed. That's sharp. Deep in his own territory for Miami. So Garrett. Garrett Watts, number nine, across midfield. Sends it up intended for David, who collides with Moraldo. Roddy, back to Cortez. This is the style that the Aztecs like to play, that midfield style. That's, uh, you say that's a South American style? It is. Uh, it 
It's a controlled, totally disciplined style where they don't try and penetrate until they see the, the real opportunity to penetrate. They're quite happy to play possession ball until they see the right moment to go. Miami will take more chances in trying to go forward and penetrate than, uh, than L.A. A lot of long passes, a fast break, uh, if you would, style of soccer. Out of bounds over the touchline of the far side. Los Angeles throwing. Douglas comes into Cortez with it. Cortez down the right wing gets by a couple of Miami players, fires it into the target oh. area. Costa got a piece of it. Torriani comes out in a good header by Figaro. Gets it out of danger. Marotti turning it around for Los Angeles. Sets it up once again. Zanotti, number five, to Cortez, number 12. Miami takes it away. Number four is Arangas. Down the right wing. Derek Watts, number nine, with the cross. Moraldo clears it out for Los Angeles. Goes to the far side to Tony Douglas. Here come the Aztecs. Score tied at one. Just over 15 minutes left to play in the first half here in the Orange Bowl. 45-minute halves in North American Soccer League play. Costa to Bonhoeffer in the center of the field. Bonhoeffer goes to the far side to Douglas. Douglas trying to get set for a shot. Good defensive play by Miami. And the Toros get it back. I just try to fire that ball across midfield and get it in position for Archibald and David to do their number. I have a little saying down here in Miami that uh, talking about Archibald and David, if the left one doesn't get you, the right one will because they both play wings. It's a rather feeble shot on goal taken by number eight, Renato Costa. Now that's right, Frank. You mentioned Archibald and David, and they do something similar to what, say, the Miami Dolphins would do with Paul Warfield. Try and get them one-on-one -on -one and uh, let them do their magic with their speed and their moves. Pedro Martinez, the midfielder, goes back to Sanchez, the goalie, with it. Comes out to the far side to Douglas. Miami having a lot of players in that offensive half of the field, Clive. Well, they've, they've got to push up now because uh, since that goal, you can see the, the confidence streaming back into, uh, into Los Angeles. I was saying that Cortez earlier, just before L.A. equalized, Cortez is experienced. There he is on the ball right now. And this experience of L.A., uh, they're, they're happy to just keep control of the ball now and, and let Miami start working hard again. And in this sunshine, in this heat, working hard is, uh, is going to tire people out come the second half. Ralph Wright trying to penetrate. It was David got his foot on it, but not enough steam behind it. An easy save for Sanchez, who came out of goal. And once again, Los Angeles controls. And Sonati shoves it back to Sanchez. Alex Paroli, the coach of the Los Angeles Aztecs. It's a man who speaks eight languages. Coached in Mexico, Italy, Guatemala. Been a coach for 26 years. Here comes Miami. Sharp uh, run down from behind, double team, loses the ball. Marotti, far side to Douglas. Score tied at one with 13 minutes, 29 seconds. Left to play in the first half of this North American Soccer League championship game from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Frank Lieber here along with Clive Toy and Kyle Rowe Jr. to bring you the action on CBS television. Well, that type of play is never popular. You're always going to hear a few boos and whistles. Sharp at midfield for Miami. Long pass downfield. Sharp. Los Angeles takes it away. Frank, you mentioned Alex Paroli, and interestingly enough, enough, no North American Soccer League team has ever repeated as champion, but Alex Paroli was coach, as you mentioned, in Rochester in 1970 when Rochester won the North American Soccer League crown. And so this is some, this is nothing new to him, and uh, I'm sure John Young would like nothing better than to, to beat his old mentor. Well, De Rienzo went virtually the length of the field as part of the shirt sleeve crowd looks on and then lost the ball. Taken away by Arangas. Sharp at midfield, contesting with Costa. Sharp sending it back to Allen Hamlet. Miami at midfield, Sharp on the attack for the Miami Toros. Score tied at one. Sharp trying to set things up, goes to Derek Watts. Watts has to take it away. 
Good steal by Luis Marotti. All-league midfield player for the Los Angeles Aztecs. Ballander, number six for Miami. Right to David, the far wing. He has trouble with DiRienzo. Last touch by Los Angeles will be a Miami throw it. Crowd coming alive, starting a rhythmic clapping, trying to get the Miami Toros inspired. That's Tony Douglas. Trying to lead a pass up to Bonhoeffer, but let him a little bit too far, and it goes out of bounds across the touch line on the far side. Got several North American Soccer League All-Stars in action in this game. We mentioned Sharp. Aguari was named to the All-Star team. Los Angeles, I don't believe, had a player on the on the first All-Star team, but they did put McMillan, the Rookie of the Year, on the second. Ralph Wright of Miami was also on the second All-Star team. I think one reason for that, Frank, uh, the lack of Los Angeles players on the NASL team is just that they haven't been in the league long enough. And a player like Ronnie Sharp and Roberto Aguirre, they've been in the league a couple years, and everyone is very much aware of their talent. Tony Douglas on the right wing for Los Angeles. About 40 yards out, firing the cross to Bonhoeffer over his head. One-on-one -on -one confrontation there. A couple of words exchanged, and Cortez, number 12, has the ball for the Aztecs. Douglas on the far side. Malander comes out to block it. Sharp picks it up. Arangas, number four, in control. Moving into the midfield circle. Los Angeles won, Miami won. Here's David. Archibald going after it. Kicked out of bounds by Marotti. Davis and Archibald are both speed burners, but uh, probably a little different. I guess uh, David, you'd say, is more of a long strider, and Archibald is kind of the water bug type, isn't he? There's no question, Frank. Uh, Archibald has, has the short strides, and uh, I think what David does best is he teases the opponent. He pushes the ball out a little bit in front of him. Uh, hopes the defender will make a move to steal it, and then we'll just push it by him. Here's David, trying to get in position for a shot. He is triple team, taken away by Los Angeles. Oh, there were white shirts all over him. Archibald is usually a pretty good uh, big game, big money player. There's no question. I think I remember back in uh, the 60s when playing with New York, uh, they played against Santos, uh, of course, Pelé's team and uh, he scored two goals on that day. Douglas on the outside. Miami's doing a good job of defending against Doug McMillan, the rookie of the year and the number three scorer in the league. He has not seen much of the soccer ball thus far this afternoon. Eight minutes, 45 seconds left in the first half. Miami won, Los Angeles won. There's McMillan. Went across the out-of-bounds line, and once again, we'll point out that the wide stripe there is the football out-of-bounds line, and the soccer out-of-bounds line is the light uh, orange color stripe. About uh, five yards or so outside of it. Long kick downfield. David going to run this one down. Trying to get inside. Shot by Derek Watts, high and wide. It'll be a goal kick for Los Angeles. The ball is out of play in the score. Is Miami one, Los Angeles one. There's our score here at the Orange Bowl. Bonhoeffer trying to make a run on goal there. Number nine, Uruguayan player for the Los Angeles Aztecs. Fires across. Uh, Cortez winds up and fires. Torriani watches it sail wide. Another goal kick. Ball is out of play, and the score is Miami 1, Los Angeles 1. Back to action we go. Los Angeles controlling the ball. Sanchez has it. Comes back out to Tony Douglas. Just have the feeling right now, Frank, there are more white shirt LA players on the field than there are Miami players. I know that isn't so, but it's just the way at the moment that LA seem to be in uh, somewhat in command of the game. Tripping foul called across the way will result in a free kick for Los Angeles as he gets Archibald. Here come the Aztecs. Boy, Watts took the full brunt of that one with his face. Marotti to McMillan. 
tried to fire the header over to Bonhoeffer and get him in position for a shot. Osvaldo Torriani, Miami goalie, playing despite a rather painful calf injury which he sustained yesterday in a workout. Miami's been working out most of the week at this time of the afternoon. They played all their games at night. So it's a little different playing in the heat here. Now Los Angeles has played most of its game uh, out of the coast uh, in the afternoon, but apparently it doesn't get this hot. And of course, Frank, the compensating factor is that uh, Los Angeles does not like the AstroTurf or the artificial surfaces, and uh, Miami much prefers it with the speed that they have up front. Here comes Miami. Derek Watts, number nine, down the right wing, looking for Archibald. Watts has it outside, feeds it over to Archibald on the far side. Archibald now on the left wing with the cross, which is partially deflected, and Sanchez comes out to make the easy save. It's it out to Marotti. Los Angeles has been an outstanding home team as well as Miami. This is Ralph Wright for Miami with a good interception. Long shot, and easy save for Sanchez. So far, Los Angeles has seven saves, and Miami has four. Corner kicks are even at two apiece here in the first half. Usually a corner kick would be a pretty good statistic as to who's applying the pressure, wouldn't it, Clive? That's uh, quite so, quite so. And uh, for Miami, of course, it's a great statistic because that's how they got their uh, their first goal, their goal, in fact. Here's Los Angeles on the attack. McMillan trying to get loose for the goal shot, and it is wide by Costa. Number eight, goal kick upcoming for Miami. The ball is out of play, and the score is Miami one, Los Angeles one. So the goal kick here for Torriani. Three minutes, 51 seconds left to play in the first half. Match is tied at one all. The last player, Frank, that took the shot, Costa, number eight for Los Angeles, was the one that scored the initial goal in, in last week's 2-0 semifinal victory for Los Angeles against Boston. And uh, a winger who can use both his feet, both he and Bonhoeffer, will switch sides of the field, and I think we're going to see that move all day long. These two teams, of course, got a pass, a bye into the semifinal round. They did not have to play quarterfinal matches, as did Boston and uh, as did Dallas. That may have had a little bit something to do with uh, how these teams came out. You know, I know some people, Kyle, uh, have criticized Los Angeles a little bit because of their schedule. It seems that uh, many of the teams went out to the coast, played a Saturday night game, and then were pretty tired and caught Los Angeles on Sunday afternoon. Well, I will have to admit, Frank, to be one of those people because uh, the San Jose... Uh-oh. There's Costa. An offsides call, I believe. Yes, it is. Offsides it is. Alex Baroli, the coach of the Los Angeles Aztecs, man who coached Rochester to the North American Soccer League title in 1970. What you were alluding to, Frank, was that most teams playing on the West Coast had to play against a very, very tough San Jose team on a Saturday night and then meet... Los Angeles the very next afternoon within about 16 hours of their game in San Jose and uh, a lot of people have thought that gave them a great advantage in the season and uh, Los Angeles of course got off to a great start uh, well, one first six seven games in a row before they tasted defeat corner kick coming up here it'll be taken by Tony Douglas you see the time remaining in the first half of play in this North American Soccer League championship game just over two minutes as Douglas Pumps it into the goal mouth, headed out of there rather easily by Figaro. Out to Sharp. Douglas comes out to contest him and take it away. Malander, number six for Miami. One on one there with Douglas in the far corner. Ball goes across the touchline. Here's a throw in and Costa, and the goalie is way out of position. Doriani came way out, 15, 20 yards. Frank, that's a normal. Well, we have a foul, but that's a normal play for a fullback is to throw the ball back to the goalkeeper. But again today, I think Malander has just forgotten that Torriani had that hurt leg and he could not uh, move out to get the ball as quickly as he normally would. A minute 20 left to play in the first half. Miami in possession. Los Angeles has done an excellent job shutting down Archibald and David, the twin scoring threats thus far for the Toros. Here's Uri Bonhoeffer for Los Angeles. He takes the shot at his high and wide. Clock continues to roll with just over a minute left to play. Miami. 
Sharp, number 10. Comes upfield to Arangas, number four. Try to lead a pass to David as to take it away by Pedro Martinez. There's a foot race between Moraldo and David. And Moraldo decides to go for the safe play and kick it out of bounds. Of course, Frank, they're teammates on that Trinidad national team, and I have a feeling that uh, Moraldo is going to be looked upon to, to really hold down both Archibald and David today. 20 seconds left to play in the first half. Archibald controls for Miami. Sanchez comes out as the shot was blocked by Martinez. Ten seconds. Hamlin coming in to contest the goalie. Punts it to about the midfield area. Here's Bonhoeffer. That's it. There's the whistle. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Los Angeles Aztecs won and the Miami Toros won. We pause now for this word from your local station. CBS Sports covers the U.S. Open Tennis Championships live from Forest Hills beginning next Saturday on CBS. Twenty-eighth broadcast of this series, and in a time of national cataclysm, sports has gone through upheavals of their own. So we've asked our correspondents to come into the studio today to give some reflections on this past year with particular reference to the stories they have covered themselves on this series. First of all, here's Dick Stockler. Well, Jack, it has to be that the sports pages of today deal with stories of football strikes, overblown salaries, lawsuits, and players popping off as much as it covers who wins and who loses the games. All of this is a sign of the times, and we better accept it as a matter of course. What really disturbs me, however, is not so much what's going on off the field, but what's apparent on the field. I fear the percentage of athletes in pro sports who exert the full effort and go all out all the time is alarmingly small. We see football players, their careers hanging by a thread, not trying to win a job, but yelling for freedom. We see basketball players earning six figures for three-year no-cut contracts loafing on the court. We see athletes with mediocre credentials openly complaining about a manager or coach's decision. When I talked with the extraordinary quarterback John Unitas days after his retirement, the qualities that made him the true competitor he was surfaced as he graphically portrayed many of today's football players. They, uh, I've seen guys, uh, especially since we've had the 40, 40 people on the team, uh, just want to make the football team. They work hard enough to make the football team, then they get on the football team. And they don't even care whether they play or not. I've seen some of them even get upset because a coach inserted them in the football game. As long as they feel that they're, they're a part of the 40 team, they can go out and buy the big cars and the fancy clothes and everything, they're completely satisfied. They don't want to put forth that effort. Johnny U went all out as a player. He doesn't like what he sees today. We are not without, however, high-priced stars who do extend themselves. Pete Rose stands out in a crowd with his constant hustle and drive. O.J. Simpson, on the start here of one of his many touchdown runs, could have put the pressure on to leave Buffalo for the West Coast early in his career. He didn't. Instead, he accepted the city that drafted him and needed him, and now he's established the cornerstone of a fine, successful franchise. And John... I guess I've had it with big-time sports. As the Gary Davidsons continue to fire up new teams and new leagues, it becomes more and more apparent that these big team sports are nothing more than tax shelters for some fat cats who are legally dodging some payments to Uncle Sam. And until Congress really comes up with some meaningful tax reform, we're going to continue to see a proliferation of jive-named organizations while the reservoirs of player talent sink lower and lower. So I'll take a rain check on all that PR about team spirit and loyalty and great American pastimes. For today, these sports, so much of the time, come off as a gaudy toy, rather than as the old days where they were games of skill and determination. I like the loners, those guys who see their endeavors not as a money tree, but as a personal endeavor, a personal commitment. Race driver Richard Petty impressed me not because he'd made a million dollars, but because he'd be out there flailing fenders in old 43, offering his fans something to really admire just as long as he says he could pay the rent. And then there was Tony Waldrop. Another example of that very personal commitment, cranking out those sub-four-minute miles, and he actually shuddered at the thought of someone ever putting together something called a supermile. 
of Pete Brock found in hang gliding, a more meaningful commitment that still demanded all the skills he learned in motorsport without subverting his activities to an 18-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week treadmill to personal oblivion. And down in Spivey's Corner, North Carolina, some very rugged and some very gentle Americans didn't give a hoot about anything more than being best at a passing folk tradition, hollering. Of all the people we talked to in this series, Eunice Kennedy Shriver seemed to me to bring the very most of the dance with her family's efforts, their personal commitment to using sports as a tool in assisting thousands of families who have retarded children. If they can get into some sort of a physical uh, activity where they can achieve success, where they can see success right away. If you run the 50-yard dash, you, then you get the medal on your neck and you know you've been a success. You know you can do something better than someone else. You know you can also do something that's, that shows accomplishment and, and uh, as I say, reward. That's extremely important for the retired because they have very few occasions in which they are successful. What about the one who loses? That's life. But even more than than that, I think, is the fact that we try and minimize the effect of loss. A few more people twisting sport into this kind of metaphor on life. And sport can come to mean a lot more than just an apology at the end of a newscast. Thank you, Ken. Over the past year, I, too, have found myself looking more at the individual and, in doing so, enjoying much more of this survival kit world of sports. I think particular of John Merritt, the jovial head football coach of Tennessee State. He'll not buy a pair of football pants larger than a size 34 waist. We have a saying, says Coach Merritt, no belly on the ball club, excepting the head coach. Or of the courage of all jockeys, but especially the skill and strength exhibited by Angel Cordero this past month at Saratoga. When he was thrown by his horse as he made his way along the rail in the home stretch. By his great strength and ability, he was able to calm his horse and prevent a very serious accident, perhaps even tragedy. Or there was and is Sam Sneed. Even in this year of Henry Aaron's great achievement and the changes being wrought by the football player's strike, Sam Sneed is one of the biggest stories around and one of the best. Not just for older people, but for all of us. The lesson to be learned from Sam is quite simple. Be enthusiastic. At 62, Sneed is successfully competing with athletes 40 years younger than himself because he would rather play golf than do anything else. We have a great deal, we have to deal so often with greed, hatred, and chicanery in this sports world that we forget sometimes that there are great lovely chunks of humor and courage and enthusiasm out there. Qualities found in the individual, not in teams or associations or franchises. We'll be back with the second half of the North American Soccer League Championship game between Los Angeles and Miami in just a moment. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Cloudy, humid, warm afternoon, excellent turnout on hand for the 1974 North American Soccer League Championship game. And there's our score at halftime, with Miami scoring first on a header off a corner kick. The score by Ralph Wright coming in the 16th minute. And De Rienzo, Ricardo De Rienzo, retaliating in the 25th minute following a foul on a penalty kick. And so it stands at one goal apiece as we are at the intermission mark. We have some statistics to show you in the first half of play, and that, by the way, is the North American Soccer League Cup, which will be awarded to the victorious team this afternoon. The Miami team, an expansion team in the league, and Los Angeles, uh, or rather Los Angeles, the expansion team in Miami in its third year. Here are the Toros' first half statistics, and Kyle Rowe Jr., what do you think? Well, I think Miami, certainly, Frank, has, has had enough shots uh, on goal, but they haven't had the quality of shot that, that they've taken earlier in the year. By that, I mean they haven't really been able to break Archibald or David or Ronnie Sharp up the middle and get that one-on-one -on -one situation with the goalkeeper. So that figure of 15 shots, though it's good, uh, doesn't indicate that they've really been putting the L.A. defense under much pressure. What does the strategy appear to be on the uh, on Archibald and David from Los Angeles standpoint? Well, what they're, everyone knows that, that what the teams try and do is, is isolate David and Archibald uh, against the wing fullbacks and then let them take on the defenders one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, with Raymond Moraldo covering in the middle, so far they've been able uh, to avoid having Archibald and David turn uh, on their defenders. All right, here is the Los Angeles Aztecs uh, statistics. And by comparison, you'll note Miami had 15 shots on goal and uh, four saves and a couple of corner kicks. What about these? Uh, 
five. I'm just wondering if the most important statistic of all, uh, Frank, isn't going to turn out to be the uh, the temperature today. I felt in the last uh, maybe 10 to 12 minutes of the first half that uh, Miami of the two teams, Miami was tiring just, just slightly. I noticed Ralph Wright once or twice um, having gone upfield to score that uh, Miami goal, having gone upfield to try and join the offense a couple of times, was really struggling to get back in a defensive position. And once Banhofer found himself five yards clear and, and might have made it 2-1 for Los Angeles before the half. And if that kind of thing does continue, with LA playing possession, keeping the ball, not putting these long balls downfield and making people run too far for them, they're, they're running five yards, they're running 10 yards, they're passing the same kind of distances. I just wonder if that might not in this tremendous heat uh, work well for LA and work badly for Miami. Of course, Miami should have the edge being used to the climate down here and having worked out a good portion of the week at the uh, very same time that this uh, this game is being played. Los Angeles coming into strange territory and playing an artificial turf which they're not used to and which they've uh, uh, frankly done fairly badly on. Los Angeles has not been a a particularly outstanding road team during the regular season. They won four games and lost six on the road and they were ten and one at home. I think it's just one of the points we were talking earlier about Alex Paroli, the L.A. coach, uh, having been part of the Rochester Championship in 70. He, in fact, was not the coach in the uh, championship game. He left Rochester before then, so he wants this one as much as anyone could ever possibly want something. Okay, here we go. Second half action underway. Los Angeles in white, Miami in dark, and the North American Soccer League Championship at stake here at the Orange Bowl. Ronnie Sharp, the All-League midfield player, down the left wing. Arguez, Arguez, over the goal line. It'll be a goal kick. Ball is out of play, and the score is Miami one, Los Angeles one. Toriani, goal kick here for the Miami Toros as we move down to the other end of play, and he punts it out of there very nicely, well beyond midfield. Cortez trying to turn it around for Los Angeles. All controlled by Derek Watts. Pumped out of there by Moraldo. Tony Douglas with the kick for Los Angeles. Sends it out of bounds on the near side. We mentioned Doug McMillan several times, the fine forward. Uh, he'll be a teammate of yours, Kyle, on the U.S. Uh, national team. I imagine you're looking forward to uh, going to work under uh, Detmar Kramer here. I certainly am. And, Frank, there are four players on the field today that should be on that team. Of course, we've talked about Alan Hamlin. Uh, and, and, and Doug McMillan, but we've also got another player for Los Angeles, uh, Yeprin Nersepian, who, even though he has that name, is an American citizen, and uh, uh, one other player that I'm not uh, sure who that's going to be. They haven't announced the team until tomorrow, but we'll get him out there Thursday, and we'll have a one -on game home and away series with Mexico this next week. Here's Archibald beating the shot up. Shot was taken by Arangas as Miami applying the pressure. Beautiful pass. Excellent ball from Archibald up to Arangas. Going back to that U.S. national team, uh, Frank, that's the start of our effort to qualify for the 1978 World Cup. And there's a big game in Dallas on September the 9th when uh, the United States plays Mexico. And uh, Carl will be going home, so to speak, to play in uh, the first of a series of very, very important games that we believe is going to put the United States national team up there along with the, uh, the best in the world in 78. Indicative, of course, Frank, of what Detmar Kramer is. He's only been hired for two weeks, and he's already set up a tour for the U.S. national team. Corner kick, Miami. Headed out of there by Los Angeles. Uh, shot by Arguez. Arguez is the only Cuban-born player on the Miami squad, uh, number two. Uh, he sought asylum in the United States here several years ago. Cubans are really are more concerned, I guess, with baseball than they are soccer-minded. Yeah, Cuba... Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, three of the, the few countries in the world where soccer is uh, is not the national sport. So Miami really going for a much broader based appeal as they try to stir up soccer interest in uh, this fine city of the South. Watts rams the ball off De Rienzo, number two, and that'll be a corner kick from Miami to be taken by Sharp. Watch again for number five, Ralph Wright, uh, coming up again, and he's right in, well, there's Watts with the shot as they came off quickly, and let's see what the call is. Penalty, 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 penalty. Oh, Los Angeles is going to be a little hot over that. Zanotti, who got the yellow card earlier, is really all over the 
referee, and I didn't see what happened, frankly. Did you, Clive? Let's look at it again. Well, here's the here's the kick coming in from uh, from Ronnie Sharp, and it's it's David David being leaping forward and, and being tripped as he went, but a gain that was a close call by referee John Davis. And for those of you who are not familiar with the uh, rule, if you are fouled inside of the penalty area, which is that uh, large box that extends about 18 yards out from the goal, the team is awarded a penalty kick, a one-on-one -on -one situation with the goalie, which is almost automatic. You saw Los Angeles have the penalty opportunity in the first half and tie the game up. And now it will be Miami with a similar penalty opportunity as they will go against Blas Sanchez. You'll notice that Sanchez has taken off his shirt here because of the heat. It will be Ron Sharp, the captain and all-league midfield player of Miami, who will take the penalty kick and try to put his team ahead. It's saved oh. by Sanchez. Sharp a hole in his head. He can't believe it. He really didn't hit that one with a lot of oomph, did he? He didn't, and Sanchez moved in the right direction. It was, you know, quite a simple save uh, for uh, for Sanchez. Again, that's pretty much a guessing game for the goalie on the penalty kick. He cannot move until the kicker kicks the ball, and he just has to guess and dive in one direction. And of course, Sanchez guessed right, but so did uh, Torriani in the first half. But the uh, kick was too hard and got by him. Well, that is a sensational let-off for, uh, for Los Angeles. That's got to be a, a big lift for Los Angeles. Here come the Aztecs now. Good fake by Zanotti. Pumps it into the target area. Ralph Wright gets his foot on it. Here's McMillan. Ball high in front of the post. Missed it away. By Torriani. Los Angeles comes right back. Bonhoeffer. High. Goal kick. Miami. The ball is out of play with the score. Miami 1. Los Angeles 1. Los Angeles controls Cortez over to De Rienzo. Number 2. He's the man who scored the Aztecs goal. Marathi at midfield. Almost mowed down by Malander. Miami takes over at midfield. Ken Malander, number 6. Sends it up on the far side to Watts. Archibald inside. Moraldo comes out to boot it away to Tony Douglas. Douglas moving down the left wing. To Costa. Costa scored a goal last week in the semifinal game. Pushes this one up right into Doriani's arms. Out quickly to Sharp. Sharp trying to play a little give and go there with uh, David. Couldn't quite get it going. It goes across the end line. Let's take a look at that penalty kick again, Kyle. Here we are from the end zone camera, and you'll see the goalkeeper trying to anticipate by watching Sharp's leg, and he saw the foot move out to the left, and he did move, yes. Back to live action we go. Miami in the dark jerseys, Los Angeles in the white. A little one-on-one -on -one between Ralph Wright of Miami and Yuri Bonhoeffer of Los Angeles. Miami has it. Arangues. Archibald. Goes wide to Derek Watts. Watts trying to move inside. Kicked out of there very nicely by Cortez. Miami continues to apply the pressure. Here's Arguez. On the left wing. Fires across into the middle. Watts trying to run it down. It comes back out to Sharp. Sharp to David. David going for the shot. De Rienzo with an excellent defensive move there. Still more pressure by Miami. Boy, this is beginning to look like uh, Holland in the World Cup in the second half. <laughs> the way they're firing on that goal. Los Angeles moving it upfield. Long pass intended for Costa. Doriani, the goalie, comes out. Ball kicked out over the goal line and last touched by Miami player. So it'll be a corner kick for Los Angeles. Fine play by Alan Hamlin there. Uh, looked like Torriani was not communicating with him, and right at the very last moment, he had to kick it outside. Costa will take the corner. He's got Douglas, and he's got to McMillan ready to break, and so is Bonhoeffer. They'll move toward that goal mouth as soon as he fires it in there. Arguez playing the post position on the inside, and the goalie, Torriani, right behind me. Comes out to Bonhoeffer. Does not attempt to feed it into the goal mouth there. Marotti 
Douglas back outside to Cortez, aiming it for McMillan. McMillan trying to hit it on the volley. Coriani comes up with it. That was a tremendous effort there by, by Los Angeles, because they played it cool around that penalty box, out again and back again, and uh, no wildness, no, no casualness at all. A very, very good effort there. Nearly got McMillan free. If this game should end up being tied, we'll go to the North American Soccer League tie-breaking procedure to decide the championship, and that each team will be given five penalty kicks, such as the ones you've seen. And the team to make the most of the five will be the, the new champion. That's if the game winds up in a tie. That's been a very controversial rule in the league this year, and there are many who say that uh, it'll be changed by next year, that it's unfair for a team to go that long and then lose it on the tie-breaker. It's a great rule if you win, Frank, and a terrible one if you lose. Well, that that I believe will be a handball against Douglas. Handball Free kick. Against Los Angeles. Sharp of Miami. I found that to be the case. The more you win, the more you like it. <laughs> and that means that Miami ought to really like it because they played six of those games. Ralph this Wright takes won them all. Ralph Wright takes the free kick, tries to pump it into the penalty area. Ball high in the air. Archibald goes up for the header, gets a piece of it, and Rienzo kicks it out. Wright chases it down. Goes to the far side. Alan Hamlin couldn't get enough mustard on it. Blas Sanchez, the goalie for the Los Angeles Aztecs, rolls it out. Uh, if you can see, Blas is wearing his own his own T-shirt with Blas on the front. De Rienzo for Los Angeles, very controlled type of play by the Aztecs, trying to slow down the Miami Speed Demons. Turned around by Figaro of Miami and right back to Rienzo. Costa went for the header there for Los Angeles, couldn't get it. Figaro, number 14, looking for somewhere to go. Hamlin gets it downfield. Watts trying to chase this one down. Turned around instead by Mario Zanotti. Archibald. The sharp. Near side to David, and David can't control. Goes out of bounds right at the offside's line, which is 35 yards out. There's the Los Angeles bench across the way. Alex Paroli, coach, and a couple of substitutes. You're allowed two substitutes, we might add, plus a goalie if you should need one. And if you use those two, if somebody gets hurt, you have to play short. Here's a shot that's high and off the post. Another shot, and this oh. is again off the post. Oh, what a situation for Los Angeles. They had one go off each post. A great deal of luck there for Miami as Torriani went diving from one side, then the other. Those would have been cinch goals he couldn't get to them, but they went off the post. Let's look at that action again. That was something else. Here's Renato Costa coming in for the first shot. A left foot shot past Torriani, hits the post, comes out. Figaro trying to get to it, but it isn't Figaro's Douglas who touches it. Coming in for the post, hits the post, out again, and Mac McMillan, Doug McMillan, still getting the ball. Unbelievable set of circumstances. Back to live action now. Cortez, after the foul, setting up the free kick for Los Angeles. He's about 40 yards out. He fires it into the penalty area, trying to get it to Bonhoeffer, headed out by Ralph Wright. To Sharp. Sharp comes to midfield to Archibald. Archibald. Getting around De Rienzo, a little one-on-one. -on -one. Look at that footwork. Oh. Out of bounds. A free kick referees, referees judge that De Rienzo pushed uh, Archibald there. I think, Frank, that uh, two shots against the uh, the post must just about neutralize one missed penalty kick. Don't you think I so? I would think so. <laughs> You've seen some things. Uh, you probably go half a soccer season without seeing. <laughs> We've seen them here in the championship game. Here's Sharp, let me get into the penalty area. Sanchez comes out, misses it away. Marotti kicking it out of bounds on the far side where it'll be a Miami throw-in. Comes into Malander. Hamlin, deep in the corner, trying to get it inside to David. The attendance this afternoon of the Orange Bowl, 15,507. It's a fine turnout for the North American Soccer League Championship game in a year in which the league has uh, gone over the million mark for the first time and set all kinds of attendance records, an indication of the vastly building interest in soccer throughout the United States. Championship game action here with the score tied. 
at one all. We're about 15 minutes deep in the second half with about 30 minutes left to play. Sharp. Moraldo heads it out of there for Los Angeles. This one looks like it's going to go right down to the wire. Here's Moraldo kicking it out again very high. Over the near sideline, the near touchline, it'll be a throw in for Miami. Into Arguez. Cuban player for Miami pumps it toward the goal. Sanchez goes high. That one was a little deceiving. Just got a hand on it and beat it over the bar. The score, Los Angeles won. Miami won. Okay, you're going to run up that. Uh... All right. Corner kick. Bumped into the goal mouth. Right with the header hits the bar. Right, who scored earlier, has the header. Hit the crossbar. Miami's Ronnie Sharp to Archibald. Archibald with the cross. Sanchez comes out of goal. The ball goes over the goal line. Let's see who touched it last. Corner kick. Miami. Four corner kicks now for Miami here in the second half. Here's that header. Header from Ralph Wright again. Up high as he was for the first goal, but this time the crossbar got in the way. I tell you, if they were aiming for that crossbar, they couldn't hit it as much as they've hit it today. Here's the corner kick. Tempted header there and uh, shot and he. Now let's see, offside. Offside is called against Miami. It'll be a goal kick. Crowd on its feet momentarily as David got loose and fired a point blank shot, but he was offside. He did not have two people between he and the, uh, the goal when he received the pass. And so lost the ball. Here's Los Angeles. Darienzo loses it out of bounds. Right at the offside line, 35 yards out. Pass comes in from Sharp. The Archibald gets the cross in the middle, and Moraldo pumps it out of there. Action fast and furious here in the second half. Los Angeles one, Miami one. As Tony Douglas starts upfield. 29 minutes left to play in the game. Toriani, Miami goalie, out to Ralph Wright. This really is remarkable, Frank, because the pace, instead of slowing in the second half, it, it seems to have lifted. It's, it's amazing how they're keeping this pace up in this enormous heat. Well, these are some superbly conditioned athletes here. You've got to be conditioned to play this game. There's no question about that. Right with the header and headed right back by Los Angeles. Marathi is double teamed and fouled. And a direct kick upcoming now for the Los Angeles Aztecs. John Young, coach of the year in the North American Soccer League on the Miami bench. Very calm, but he can't really be inside. He's in his third year in the league. I should say Miami is in his third year in the league. Young has uh, been around some time. As we mentioned, he played for Paroli at Toronto back in his younger days. In fact, he was captain of the New York Cosmos in our first year in 71. There's a wild shot taken by DeRienzo. Goal kick upcoming to score. Los Angeles won. Miami won. Instead of a Vega comeback, you can have a Ford Pinto Squire. A Pinto Squire gives you almost 15% more rear cargo area than a Vega. I didn't know that. Resale value? Pinto wagons returned more of their original sticker price than any other station wagon in America. Big or small, domestic or import. I didn't know that. Now that you know, see your local Ford dealer today. Los Angeles in control. Tony Douglas speeding down the right way. Looking for McMillan. He's got him. Got a piece of the ball and then went down. And McMillan went high in the air and he's getting up very slowly. Foul called against Yuri Bonhoeffer, number nine of Los Angeles. Free kick for Miami. McMillan is back up again. McMillan, though he's rookie of the year, is 29 years old. He's been around for a little while. He wasn't born in this country, but he grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, where he was an outstanding football player in Cleveland, in addition to being a fine soccer player.
26 minutes plus left to play in the game. Miami one, Los Angeles one. L.A. and White. Sonati sends it downfield. We're getting a little bit of shower activity here at the Orange Bowl. Typical late afternoon uh, thunder showers lurking in the area. Ralph Wright trying to get it by Zanotti and can't. Fans uh, think there should have been a handball call there. Referee says play on. Douglas for L.A. down the right wing. Looks around, tries to set it up. Sends it back to Cortez near midfield. He's double teamed and Sharp takes it away. Up to Archibald. Archibald and Dave Rienzo, who have had quite a battle this afternoon. Frank, if we do and get, indeed get some rain, uh, it's going to definitely change the play of uh, people like Ronnie Sharp, number 10, and Cortez for L.A., who are wearing flat shoes today. And uh, we may see trainers running in and throwing shoes out onto the field, uh, but they'll need if the field does get wet. Here's Los Angeles on the attack. Figaro heads that one away for Miami. To Alan Hamlin on the far side. Derek Watts, number nine, starts up field. Passes off to Ken Malander. Back to Hamlin it goes, and he loses it. Barati to Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer starts down, trying to get it to McMillan, and Figaro with the header. Offside. McMillan was offside. Once again, a reminder that the Buffalo Bills take on the Minnesota Vikings, our first CBS national telecast of NFL football. Of course, that's uh, not counting really the Hall of Fame game, which you saw a bit earlier with the rookies and the free agents. But this one features uh, O.J. Simpson and company and the uh, entire cast, Fran Tarkenton. That's on CBS tonight, 9.30 Eastern Time. Tony Douglas. Rather a futile effort from about 40 yards out. Didn't have anybody at all uh, coming across. He just threw it up there at the goalie. No problem for Torriani making the save. There's the score. 24 minutes left to play in this 1974 North American Soccer League Championship game. Good job by Arguez saving it from going out of bounds. Derek Watts, who scored two goals last week against Dallas, sends it deep into the corner. Back to the goalie, it Blas Sanchez. You can see the Sanchez has noticed the effect of the rain already, uh, Frank. He's now wearing gloves. He must have just uh, just put them on, and some of the crowd are pouring back under the uh, under the stands to get away from what seems to be a slight shower, but enough to make a uh, difference. Steve David, the sharp. Nobody there. Sharp threw it down into the corner, and De Rienzo comes out to field it. For the Aztecs of Los Angeles, up to Douglas. Pretty good battle there with the Rangas. Marotti back to Cortez. Cortez number 12. Marotti. Ralph Wright, number five, is all over him. You saw a little bit of Wright last week, didn't you, Kyle? He certainly did, Frank. Uh, he played a very good game against us, and he's really the, the base for this whole Miami defense. Uh, he moves up, he covers the taller men for the, for the opponent's teams and uh, he's done an excellent job all year long. And he throws in a goal for good measure every once in a while like he did today in the first half. There's a lead pass to Tony Douglas. Douglas trying to get it by. Kicked out of there nicely by Hamlin. As Torriani had come to the far side. Douglas trying to get it into the middle in position for a goal. Archibald trying to run this one down and save it from going out. Kicked over the goal line. Goal kick for Los Angeles. The score, Los Angeles one, Miami one. Acid in your stomach can sometimes splash into your esophagus to give you... Heartburn. Oh, do I have heartburn. Introducing soothing new Alka-Seltzer Gold, the pure antacid you drink. Down it goes, past your esophagus to your stomach to wash heartburn away. Heartburn, you're all washed up. New Alka-Seltzer Gold washes heartburn away. For headache with upset stomach, use original Alka-Seltzer with specially buffered aspirin. Back to action here at the Orange Bowl. Score tied and one all. As Miami starts it downfield. 
I want to remind you that next weekend, CBS begins its extensive coverage of the U.S. Open Tennis Championships at Forest Hills, where the top men and women players in the world will compete. Be sure and join us for all the action. That was Moraldo from Los Angeles, kicking that one out of trouble in midfield. Next two weekends, you're going to see 11 and a half hour of tennis on four different days on CBS, where you see the best in sports on the number one network. Miami on the attack. Going for the go-ahead goal. And one goal right now would look pretty big the way this game is developing. Arguez getting the return pass there. Pushes it over to Ronnie Sharp. Sharp trying to get around Bonhoeffer into the middle. Double team still has it to Derek Watts. Watts now trying to set up the cross. DeRienzo blocks it. Tony Douglas comes up with it for Los Angeles. Turned around by Ralph Wright. Arangas loses it on the far side to Mario Zanotti, who himself loses it out of bounds. Miami throw it. Here's Roberto Aguirre, who has been injured. He is an all-league midfield player for Miami, and he's been warming up. I think, Frank, he'll come in and replace number six, Ken Mallander, who has not been playing all year long. Uh, Aguirre was hurt earlier in the year. He had a hamstring pull and is just now getting back and uh, feels pretty fit. Mallander looks like he's quite tired after this first half and uh, the second half. Arangas taking the throw in across the way. Sanchez loses the ball. Right. Shot hits the post again. Unbelievable. That would have been an easy goal. Here's McMillan. Doriani coming out to stop that threat. I believe that was Arangas, but I'm not sure. Oh, he had a point-blank shot there, Kyle. We'll take a look at it again momentarily. Here is Bonhoeffer with a throw-in on the far side for Los Angeles. Well, that's three shots we've had hit the post now. Miami. Derek Watts. Pushing it to David in the middle. That's Ronnie Sharp. Up to David. David shoots. Sanchez got his hands on it. Corner kick. Here comes that last shot and the ball into the middle. Of course, the goalkeeper with those gloves on doesn't quite, isn't used to the feel of the ball yet. And Watts hitting the top of the crossbar. A Los Angeles player was shaken up with the score. One all. We pause now for this word from your local station. This is CBS. We go, Ronnie Sharp controlling the ball for Miami. There's a goal! Unbelievable goal. I think it bounced off one of the Aztec players. And I believe it bounced off Moraldo. We've got a fight. We've got a fight going out inside the net. Bonhoeffer, number nine, is in the middle of it. So is uh, Figaro, number 14, for Miami. Sonati, number five in white from Los Angeles who got the warning card early. What an incredible goal. Let's look at it again. Coming across there, Steve David going for it. A clearance, a clearance from Moraldo. Hit one of his own players and went back into the net. Oh, what a, what a goal after all the great attempts there have been that haven't resulted in goals. And still on the field there, the referee and his linesman crowd on their feet, happy with a goal, but wondering just why that fuss is going on in the uh, Los Angeles goal. Well, let's see what happens if anyone is ejected from the game as a result of that fight. An incredible goal, an own goal by Los Angeles as Moraldo tried to clear it out and ricocheted off one of his own men into the net. You know, Frank, I can't help but remember last year when we were playing Philadelphia in the same type of thing, an own goal, uh, is what gave Philadelphia that lead that they never relinquished against us. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the Los Angeles team responds psychologically to that type of a goal. The tragedy, too, for L.A. is that at that moment, they were down to 10 men. Ricardo de Rienzo, their right back, was in fact sitting behind the goal. Must have been felt the most helpless spectator in the, uh, in the stadium. There's de Rienzo limping away. He had a, a player's eye view of that goal. He injured his ankle very early in the game, and Gamely uh, played on to this point when he hurt it again. 
He is the man who has scored the only Aztec goal, so Miami now leads by a score of two to one. And we'll have to see. Let's, let's count some heads down there. How many we got? Well, they've got ten on the field now, Frank, and it looks as though uh, we'll have Jose Lopez, the UCLA player uh, in his first year, first round draft choice for LA coming in to replace him. All right. There's John Young, the Miami coach looking on as we head back to action now. 17 minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the game. Los Angeles and White. Zanotti, number five. As L.A. playing with a man, uh, man light here. What would be the strategy here? Is there any strategy uh, here? I, just don't, I don't understand it. Uh, or could someone have been ejected because of the fight? Uh, unless, well, unless Durienzo was ejected, um, then I do not know why L.A. has not put on a, on a substitute. I don't understand it. And I, I did not see Durienzo being ejected in any way. Oraldo trips and falls. David takes it away. Arangues goes sprawling on the far side. The referee says play on. I believe, nope, he calls it. Foul is called. Tripping foul, I believe, against uh, Zanotti. At this point, I imagine Davis is going to have to watch it a little bit. He's going to lose control things here. Yeah, it's got a bit tough for him right at the moment. So I, can, I can see Lopez, uh, Jose Lopez, warming up on the uh, the L.A. bench. So maybe maybe now he is going to come on and substitute. Moraldo heads that one over the goal line, which means another corner kick for Miami. Miami has been applying the pressure here in the second half. They lead now 2-1 to one on that own goal by Los Angeles. Here's the corner by the Toros coming across. And the, the referee wait. gave time out there to There's allow substitute. Lopez coming on, in fact. Jose All right, Lopez. here comes the substitute now from across the way. Running into your uh, picture there, Jose Lopez from UCLA, a rookie and the number one draft choice in the entire North American Soccer League this uh, past season. He's been given a lot of experience this year, Frank. Uh, in past games, he substituted for number six, Pedro Martinez, who's had uh, an ankle injury. And last, last week's game against Boston, uh, he played the whole second half. So uh, he's in a tough position, but he's certainly capable of it. Archibald can't control it. Goal kick coming up for Los Angeles. The score tied. Los Angeles, or rather, now Miami leading. Just a little over 15 minutes left to play in the 1974 North American Soccer League championship game as Toriani, the Miami goalie, punched the ball well beyond midfield. It's Lopez with the header for Los Angeles, taken by Tony Douglas over to Cortez, number 12. He works the far side to Marotti. Marotti prevents it from going out of bounds. Or did he go out of bounds? He did, see. and the crowd is cheering that just as if it was a goal, Frank. They're really on their toes now. He stepped out of bounds, so it'll be a Miami throw-in on the far side near midfield. Arguez on the throw-in. Arguez did an excellent job getting the ball to Arangas, who penetrated deeply. Here's David. Steve David trying to get in position, and he goes down. All it sees is still in play. Now whistle. Free kick for uh, for L.A. Let's see where they spot the ball here. It's going to be ruled over the end line, apparently, on a goal kick given to the Los Angeles Aztecs. Last touch by Miami. Bumped out of there by Zanotti to midfield, taken by Miami. Ronnie Sharp, number 10, controls. Trying to get it to Archibald. Saved by Lopez. <laughs> It'll be a shoving foul called against Sharp for pushing off on Douglas. And Los Angeles will get the ball on the free kick. We're now in the final 14 minutes of play. Lopez with the free kick. Substitute. Roberto Aguirre is going to replace Watts. As we mentioned, he has been injured here uh, recently. He is an all-league midfielder, as John Young, the Miami coach, looks on. Marani, number 10 for Los Angeles in the white. Cleared out by Hamlet. Marani turns it around again. Better by Figaro gets it out of there. Malander. 
up to Aguirre. Ball out of bounds. Throw in. Los Angeles. Marotti pumps it into the penalty area. Nobody there as uh, like McMillan went down. He has really been marked, really been contained in this game. Leading score for the Aztecs. Rookie of the year. Here's Bonhoeffer, number nine. Bonhoeffer goes down outside the penalty area. And we get a whistle and a tripping foul is called in Los Angeles. We'll get the free kick just outside of that penalty area. And Bonhoeffer looks hurt. Bonhoeffer getting up very slowly. Los Angeles setting up the free kick. Miami forming the wall with a half dozen players to block the angle. Let's see if uh, Bonhoeffer takes it here. Here's the view from behind the goal as you look over the shoulder. The Miami players forming the wall. Frank, what they're trying to do is block off about half of that goal so that the goalkeeper only needs to defend. Oh, a great shot. It's a goal! A great shot by Bonhoeffer as Torriani went wide to his right, got his hands on it, and couldn't hold it, and the score is tied again. The curl, the curve of that shot was just incredible. I don't know. I believe it was Bonhoeffer that was shaken up after he took the shot. He's down to the ground now. Here it is again. Watch the spin on the ball if you can pick it up on uh, on your home TV. It's going to come just over the top of the wall. Look at that and curve. again, Torriani having to push off of his right leg because he couldn't use his left because it's injured. And I think that's the key. The score tied. Los Angeles 2, Miami 2. <laughs> Ready to go back to action with the score tied at two all. It was number eight, Costa, who scored the goal, who's given credit for the goal instead of Bonhoeffer, number nine. So give Costa credit for that last Los Angeles goal on the free kick. And a spectacular shot it was. Here's Miami. 11 minutes left to play in the game as Los Angeles takes it away. Marani, number 10, leads it to the near side to Tony Douglas. Douglas winds up. Aiming for McMillan and Torriani comes out of there to fist it away nicely. Bonhoeffer on the far side fires it right back in there in front of the goal. This one's wide. It'll be a goal kick for Miami. The score, Los Angeles 2, Miami 2. When you're a baseball coach, you get to know a lot about athletes' foot. My best players got it. I always recommend Absorbine Junior. Absorbine Junior with its control flow applicator gets right to the itch in seconds. Helps heal athlete's foot because it kills fungus on contact. Hey, coach. Yeah. I can feel it working. Right. Absorbine Junior really works. Kills fungus on contact, stops itch in seconds. Try it. Goal kick here for Miami. We've got uh, a little controversy going now about who scored that last goal. Whether well, it was uh, Bonhoeffer, number nine. Well, the linesman down there said it was Bonhoeffer. Somebody else said it was Costa. I thought it was Bonhoeffer. Yeah, I did too, Frank. It certainly seemed to be Bonhoeffer. And I must say, you know, this, this whole game, that free kick just highlights it, but this whole game has really made me proud of the North American Soccer League. It's been a tremendous game, tremendous effort, a lot of skill. I think I'd speak for Carl as well to say this really is a, a great championship game. There's no question. You can't say too much really about the Miami fans either because, well, we've had uh, a little bit of everything, and now it looks like the... We've uh, got some cramps on the linesman on the far side of the field. This happens every once in a while in the North American Soccer League, and fortunately we do have a reserve linesman available and uh, a lot of great planning by someone uh, in the administration. Well, we've seen it all. The score, Los Angeles 2, Miami 2. May I help you? Yeah, I want to return this person. Squeaky elbow. Nah, us Levi's jeans want color, style, variety. But your person's dull, drab, rubby tubs. Look at us. Lemon cords, khaki denim, coral bells. Levi's jeans have variety. Well, there is our chameleon model. Ah, that I like. Like, like, Levi's. 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 <coughs> oh, oh, it was only a dream. Sure, a dream. Go back to sleep.
sleep. Back to action we go. <laughs> We've had a little bit of everything here at the Orange Bowl. We've had clarification that the last Los Angeles goal was indeed by Bonhoeffer, as we called it originally. Here's Los Angeles on the attack. Now, in fact, Frank, we have uh, referee John Davis stretched out on the sideline, uh, getting attention to that cramp in his leg, and uh, senior linesman Paul Avis from Toronto has taken over as, uh, as referee. So the game is going on with a substitute referee. Costa. Taken away by Miami. Sharp. Up to Aguirre. Well, the commissioner, Phil Woosnam, was in our booth during a good portion of our telecast. He's not here now, but we ought to congratulate him on a, a great show for the North American Soccer League in its final game. Here's a shot on goal. Cleared out by Miami as Bonhoeffer tried to get it across to McMillan. We have seen just about everything you could see in soccer today. Sensational goals, great defense, goals at the crossbar, penalty kicks. You've got it. another eight minutes to go. <laughs> Eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining. The score is tied at two. If it remains tied, we go into a penalty kick situation with each team getting five penalty shots. The team that makes the most is the champion. If they're tied, we go to sudden death. There's the referee, John Davis, and I'm sure, Kyle, uh, you've had those cramps before, and they can start. Oh, they really do, and again, it shows how hot and how demanding this game is today. Well, that's a whole lot of field for one referee to run around, run around too. Here's Miami moving the ball upfield. Whistle and a foul call against Cortez of Los Angeles. Free kick here for Miami. Sharp leading it down to Archibald. Archibald trying to move around Moraldo. Can't keep it, uh, barely keeps it in bounds. Moraldo takes it away. Up to Costa. Costa loses it to Hamlet. Bonhoeffer gets it back for Los Angeles. Costa goes sprawling. Figaro comes up with the ball. Seven minutes, 15 seconds to go. There's Costa getting up very closely, and the referee, John Davis, still being attended to. Now he's getting a little oxygen, looks like. It is stifling down on the floor of the orange bowl. Miami on the attack. They're going for what could be the winning goal. Looks like Aguinas. Not to Sharp, we get a whistle offside, called against Miami. See many of the fans on their feet here. 15,000 plus on hand at the Orange Bowl. Very leaden skies now here. Six and a half minutes to go. That's an awfully unfortunate mental mistake by one of the Miami forwards to be offside because Miami had held the ball and worked most of their players down into the attacking zone and was in great position uh, to be a threat. Ralph Wright sending it down to Steve David, who's been contained. He's the leading scorer for the Miami Toros. Gets the cross. Headed over the end line. Jose Lopez making sure of that one. There's somebody coming in behind him. And uh, safety first there. Get it there to play. Arangas sets up the corner kick. Let's and look this time. View. Let's look this time, Frank, and see if anyone goes with Ralph Wright, number five. Kick uh, is not a good one. Into the side of the net. Goal kick, upcoming for Los Angeles. Davis uh, being assisted from the field now. Getting a nice hand from the large crowd across the way. Five minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the 1974 North American Soccer Championship game. Gary, number eight, trying to control for Miami, loses it to Costa, number eight, of Los Angeles, up to Marotti at midfield. Comes back to Cortez. He's run down from behind by Arangas, and Ralph Wright comes up with it for Miami, up to Sharp, and Sharp is virtually tackled from behind by Bonhoeffer, number nine. Yellow card being flashed against Bonhoeffer. And against Sharp, I think, uh, Frank, he took, uh, he's cautioning Sharp for retaliating and cautioning Van Hoffer for committing the foul that caused the retaliation. So that's, uh, what, four yellow cards we've had this game. There's the time remaining in the game as Miami is rewarded with a free kick here. Figaro pumps it into the penalty area. David trying to run it down. Gets around Lopez. 
Lopez all over him at the near side, trying to get it inside to Archibald. Ball kicked out of bounds by Moraldo. It's a Miami throw it. Sharp. To Aguez. Going to the far side. Aguere. Trying to catch up with that one, and Moraldo pumps it up into the stands. Throw it on the far side for Miami. Four minutes left to play in the game. Exciting action in the North American Soccer League Championship game. There's a cross into the middle, a shot, and a goal by number four, Esteban Arangues. Here comes the cross, come here across now. And Arang is running in almost as Ralph Wright did. Heading it, he's not a big man, but he got his head there just right. Of course, Sanchez hardly made a move for it. Of course, the key there, Clive, was that, was that Arangas coming from the midfield uh, and unmarked, coming right in front of, uh, I believe that'll be Steve David. That's right. And right. putting the ball into the net. Right in that corner. Esteban Arangas scores for Miami with three minutes and 20 seconds left to play. I tell you, hesitate a moment up here because you can't quite tell if that ball is going into the side of the net or not. It looked, uh, and I hesitated a moment there to be sure it did go into the net because it looked like Sanchez was almost paralyzed, almost That's right. frozen. Three minutes separating Miami, the Toros, from their first North American Soccer League championship, if they can hang on now. A whistle and a foul call. Against Los Angeles, Morati. All these fans are raising the roof. You think the Dolphins were playing in the Super Bowl today? Long pass downfield. Moraldo breaks it up. Martinez comes over. That goal came in the 86th minute. There's McMillan with a try. McMillan it's a scores! Goal! McMillan for Los Angeles. And it's tied at three with two minutes and 18 look at, seconds to go. Look at that excitement. Douglas McMillan, the number three scorer in the North American Soccer League. And rookie of the year comes through with a clutch goal. A long pass there from Tony Douglas all the way up, just a touch. Figaro almost cleared it, and McMillan got it back again. Hamlin, what an attempt to try and clear off that goal line. This really doesn't look like the goalkeeper Toriani that we've seen uh, this year. He's been making a lot of unsure kind of halfway runs, and... Uh, oh, look how close Alan Hamlin was, Kyle. Hamlin sliding across and trying to prevent it. Of course, he can't use his hands. But he's sliding across, trying to kick that thing out with his feet. And couldn't quite get to it. And we've got another substitution coming up here, Frank. I think it's uh, Roger Verdi. Roger Verdi coming on for Miami. I can't see who's gone off, but it's Verdi on. One minute and 25 seconds left to play. If it's tied, we go to the tiebreaker. The penalty kicks. Doriani being dogged by Bonhoeffer. Sends it out to Arguez. Action fast and furious. Score was tied one all at halftime. One reason that they might have brought Verdi in, Frank, is that he's an excellent penalty kicker. And the way it looks right now, we will go into that tiebreaker system uh, within about another minute. You may have noticed, too, that number five, Ralph Wright, has moved from his defensive mid, uh, back position all the way up to the front line to get a little extra height uh, on the front line for Miami. Sharp to Aguirre, trying to get the cross, and he hits it a little bit too hard and too long. Goal kick coming up. I tell you, Frank, there's just one thing to be said for not being part of a team that's in the championship game. Your heart doesn't bump quite as much as it would do right now, Kyle, right? No, that's certainly true. This, this is really tense. Zanotti will take the goal kick. Fires it out to midfield. Figaro turns it around with a fine header. Cortez with the header for Los Angeles. Figaro comes right back. Marotti clears it out of bounds on the far side. 37 seconds. Left to play in regulation time. For some reason, the clock is stopped, and I can't understand why that would be. Now it's rolling again. Okay. Okay. 
Miami at midfield. This may be their last rush. David trying to save it. Shoots oh. it into the side of the net. Oh. I thought for a oh. moment he hit it. David just didn't have the angle on it and pumped it into the side of the net. Goal kick, Los Angeles. And some of the more knowledgeable fans already running around behind that uh, that west side uh, goal, Frank, to uh, start getting ready for the penalty kicks, which look as if they're going to happen. Zanotti to midfield. Coming to Lopez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of bounds over the touchline. Miami throw in eight seconds left to play. We will go to the tiebreaker to decide the North American Soccer League Championship for 1974. There is the whistle. Regulation time is over. The score is tied. Los Angeles 3, Miami 3. We'll have the tiebreaker in just a moment. Of his body, but hopefully will not be moving his feet. Here's Zanotti for Los Angeles, and he has it. Zanotti 1, Miami nothing. Now, Miami's first kicker will come out in an attempt to tie it up and Blas Sanchez will move in the goal. I want to remind you on Saturday September 14th the CBS Sports Spectacular returns for 12 Saturday afternoon shows and the opener is the $250,000 Invitational Cup race at Belmont Park. Roberto Aguirre will attempt to tie it up for Miami. Can you just imagine Frank the, the tension the pressure on these players now having played 90 minutes this is what it all depends on. It's tied at one all. Going back into the goal position now, Osvaldo Torriani, the Argentinian goalie for Miami, and Uri Van Hopper will take the second penalty kick. Of course, Durienzo, who scored the penalty for Los Angeles in regulation time, he is off the field and cannot kick. One on one. Van Hoffer scores. Los Angeles two, Miami one. And Soriani went the right way and almost got his body to it. It was too hard. Any softer, he might have uh, might have got it, Kyle. Be interesting to see too whether or not. Uh, well, I was going to say whether or not Ronnie Sharp. Uh, is going to be Coach John Young's choice to kick because, uh, of course, earlier in the game we had Sanchez stopping Sharp's penalty kick, and it looks like he'll be back in there. Right. Sanchez moving back into goal, and Ron Sharp, the Miami captain and midfielder, will attempt to tie it up at two all. We're tied at the end of five. We keep going. He it's a save for it Sanchez. Again. Boy, that is the no, second no, one. No, no, Sanchez. Hold it, Frank. He's he making moved. him take. He's making him take it again. He moved. The I goalie moved. Sanchez moved too fast, and Sharp will get to retake it. Boy, that would have been the second one that Sharp would have taken away from uh, Sanchez. Would have taken away from Sharp today. Here's the. Here we can see it now, Sanchez. Whoa, he did. He did move. He did move. You'll notice too on that monitor, Clive, that the goalkeeper is jumping out towards on an angle trying to cut the angle a little bit uh, for the shooter sharp this time goes the other way and he ties it up at two all third time lucky for Ron sharp how much scouting can you do Kyle in advance of a team or do you scout them uh, in advance for the tiebreaker you certainly do uh, as many times as these teams have been in uh, in tiebreakers this year there's no question that both coaches uh, Paroli and John Young know the preferences of the kickers and they've told their goalkeepers. Luis Moratti against Osvaldo Torriani and Moratti rams it into the net. Three to two, Los Angeles. Is it an advantage uh, in your opinion to kick first here? Well, Keep I guess pressure wise. <laughs> depends if you make it or you miss it, huh? That's so that's right. There's Commissioner Phil Woosnam. He's got a trophy down there that nobody wants right now. <laughs> Oh, they want it, Frank, and how they want it. Oh. Ken Malander, number six. Interesting statistic here, Frank, is that he's missed the most penalty kicks all year for the Toros, and we'll just have to see what he does here. Tied at three all. 
Of course, it is conceivable if we go past five that eventually we could go to the goalies going against each other, could we? That happened in San Jose this year, uh, Frank, I believe against Seattle, and it got all the way down to Mike Ivano, the San Jose goalkeeper, uh, taking a penalty kick. Peter Polotis, who came out of the late stages of the game for Los Angeles. Against Osvaldo Torriani, the penalty kicks tied at three all. No one has missed. Two kickers to go on each side. Polotis gets it by him. Four to three, Los Angeles. And again, the pressure is on Miami. Well, just think of it. The entire season coming down now to a couple of kicks. These players have been going at it since March and April training, and now it's Roger Verdi with an attempt to tie it for Miami. Peter Philotis, who just uh, made that penalty kick, that's now 24 straight in a row that he's made in professional competition. Las Sanchez, Los Angeles goalie, setting himself. Uh, there's a bit of a holdup. Uh, referee John Davis has gone across the corner to talk to uh, Chief Referee Eddie Pearson about something. football tonight on CBS 9:30 Eastern Time. OJ Simpson will be in action. Garcia we also got that uh, special 30 minute show preceding it to give you a complete explanation on the new rules in effect this season. All the changes will be explained and demonstrated in this entertaining special which comes up at 9 p.m. immediately preceding the Buffalo Minnesota game. Here we go. Birdie trying to tie it up at four all. It was high, I believe. It was, it high. was high. It was high. And now all that has to happen is for the final Los Angeles kicker to make it, and they win it. Okay, Verdi just getting underneath the ball too much. He hadn't been in the game for more than a couple minutes, and that may have been one reason why he got under the ball. This is the kick. This is it. Douglas, number 11. Tony Douglas can win. The North American Soccer League Championship for the Los Angeles Aztecs by making this kick. Here it is. Beautiful save by Toriani. He's making him take it again. Wait a minute. I think he's making him take it again. Toriani moved too soon. And Douglas will get a chance to kick it again. Toriani made his move too soon. Before the ball is kicked and the referee, John Davis, is indicating. Oh, yes, he moved. Oh, did he move? Of course, the upper part of his body can move as long as he doesn't move, move his feet. From the end zone view, here we are. You can see he moved his right foot oh. well before the ball was kicked. All right, here it is again now. Douglas with an opportunity to win the championship for Los Angeles, and he does! The Aztecs have won the championship!